yo 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 what's going on everybody this is the part-time artist podcast this is episode 185 and i am back i know it's been a little bit but i've been on tour with war park for the past couple weeks and uh and i'm back now but (laughs) i'm not back for long i am going to be flying to sweden next week so i will be taking another little bit of a break from the podcast but we have such awesome fucking guests lined up and today is no exception this this podcast today is awesome all right it's gonna be very philly (laughs) very very philly um so what do i want to talk about before we jump into the show here yes i am gonna be like in sweden so uh my cell phone bill is probably gonna jump up so if you're thinking about switching your cell phone provider now is the best time check out my affiliate link for visible 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 is a great uh cell phone provider that i use um it's really cheap it's only like 20 25 bucks a month you get a free month when you sign up with my affiliate link and i get a free month too um, so it's going to be really beneficial when I have to go and, uh, turn on the global pass and it, and you have the ability also with visible to use it in different countries if you want. So if you can, if you want to look at all the details, check it, check it out through my, um, affiliate link. Um, what else? I have an affiliate link for distro kid. If you need to get your music on streaming platforms, it's really easy with DistroKid. It's what I use. Uh, so you can click that code and sign up for 7% off. But today is Bandcamp Friday. I hope, you, uh, I hope you're buying shit on Bandcamp because that is the way. And now Bandcamp is sponsored by Roland. So that's really cool. Um, hopefully that, uh, I don't know, hopefully that goes somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Um, what else? Dude, the War Park tour was unbelievable. It was so much fun to go around the country and to go into Canada and to see where the music scenes are in these places, how they are thriving after COVID or if they are limping after COVID. And, uh, it's really cool to see where the kids are at. Uh, the kids are, uh, they're, they're in upstate New York a little bit they're in uh they're definitely in uh burlington vermont and they're definitely in massachusetts so really cool really cool and and rhode island so really cool stuff in the northeast uh with our northeast tour so it's pretty promising um but the scenes are uh holistically not as good as philadelphia (laughs) and uh today we're gonna be talking with Tim, who is, uh, he runs a record label that we are, I, with my new band here in Philadelphia, who does not have a name yet, (laughs) our new band is going to be joining Tim on his record label uh, very shortly, so I'm super stoked for that, and we're also playing with Tim and his other label mates, other bands that are on the label, this Sunday in philly at philomoca 1 p.m all ages matinee there is nothing more punk than a matinee it's gonna be awesome it's like a pre phillies party because the the phillies playoffs are gonna be at four o'clock we're gonna get the show rolling at about one so it's gonna be a lot of fun you know come to the show and then fucking find a bar and uh get in the philadelphia spirit here um yeah aside from all of that what do i want to say i don't know we got uh war park also has some really cool dates coming up in november but um but yeah i'm gonna be in sweden for the next couple weeks so you're not gonna see me but i do have really really awesome guests lined up so without further ado let's jump in the show today and please 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 interact with this 
on YouTube. YouTube is my passion. I'm putting out a bunch of content on there. So it's cool if you're listening and you're subscribing and you're sharing. That is so awesome. If you could somehow interact, engage on YouTube, that is the best thing. If you're watching this, like it, put a comment of your, uh, even if it's just the alphabet, just comment something with it, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, it really, really, really helps me out, man. Like that is my passion. All right. I have with me a very, very special guest from right here in the great city of Philadelphia. I have Tim. Tim, thank you so much for coming on the show. Awesome to be on the show. Now, Going Tim, on, everyone. Tim is a, a man that wears many hats. You wear a lot of hats. We got the record label. We got the band. We got the, 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 the jobs, the dad, the husband, like everything, man. Everything. Is there a hat you don't wear? Uh... I'm going to say the doing stuff around the house hat, like being able to fix <laughs> oh, stuff. Oh, no. No. No, 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 it's not that bad. Honestly, YouTube has been the best thing in the world for learning how to fix shit. So 100% recommend it. Like, yes. Uh, I did electrocute myself once, but outside of that, who totally hasn't? fine. Who hasn't, though? Uh, it's... Competent people, professionals. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have it. I, think, I think every American has been electrocuted at one time or another. Um, That's sad. <laughs> it's just a part you got. I think you you need that to get the diploma. So before we get rolling here, I want to start with I don't know. This might be controversial. We'll see. I want to start with something controversial. Okay. And it's right off the bat. I want to know: Is October the best month of the year? You got spooky shit. You got haunted houses. You got kids walking around in costumes, getting people for candy. Uh, I'm going to say yes, with one exception, one very important exception, pumpkin spice, pumpkin Ooh. beer. I know. So that's, that's, that's the cons, <laughs> but overall, yeah, all up by May, right when it stops being freezing cold. Oh man, those damn fucking pumpkins, man. They just don't know. They just weasel their way into everything. They're like the cranberry of, uh, of the fall. Yeah. I think uh, I think you and I are are spoiled in Philadelphia. Philadelphia in October is amazing. It's fantastic. It, it, it's electric down here, y'all. And uh, were you always are, were you always from Philly? I was like I grew up in the Burbs, uh, and I hung around. Uh, well, you know, because I'm I'm as uh, Ash from Kem from uh, Thirteen Cavities put it, I'm old. So, uh, you know, I used to hang out down South Street. I've right. been through like three, three iterations of Dobbs, Pontiac Grill, and then Dobbs again. Right. Um, Dobbs. You know, I, it's, yeah. And I've always kind of stayed here. I've ventured out for a little bit, but always just kind of came back. And I've been, yeah. you know, in Philly proper for like the last 15 years. Rad. I mean, that's the same thing. I just, I, I just got back from a uh, tour with my other band and it was just like, I mean, we were in Canada, we were in Vermont, we were in, you know, awesome. Western Massachusetts and I'm just like, yeah, it's, this is pretty and this is great, but I can't, I want to be back in Philly. <laughs> it's not home. Western Massachusetts is weird. I've been out that way so many times for shows and it's just like, you get the weird small towns where like, Everyone comes out and it's just strange. It's a yeah. strange vibe. New England is weird. I love it, but I'd much rather be here. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, the phrase when people come out of the woodwork. I'm pretty sure that started in Massachusetts, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, like you've gone to, down those like New England roads at night and you totally understand what the fuck Stephen King was talking about. He yeah. was writing all of his hard books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, it's a vibe. Um, so yeah. let's. So this is kind of like a chicken or the egg type of situation. You're fronting mm -hmm. Fameless Records. You're also on Seeing Snakes in the band. What What came first, the bands or the label? The band, a hundred percent. So we've been around for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's gone through more lineups than I can count. We've been the the current lineup's been together since. 
2017. Um, and before that, we were just trying to think of ways to get our music out. Mm. Uh, you know, it wasn't really. I think it's a way of like how Fat Mike started hit, uh, Fat Records, how Brett Gerwood started uh, Epitaph. It was just a way for us to get our own music out. Um, and then just started like, you know, you can only put out so much of your own shit. And Philly just has a plethora of like really good artists that aren't really getting recognized the way they should for sure uh yeah i mean that's that's been kind of like the, the fun the funnest part of it is just finding stuff i want to listen to and just being like this is it this is me i want to hear more of it i want to fucking share it with the world and just roll with it if you could could you give us like a sense of even in the past 15 years what what has what was kind of the the story arc of the Philadelphia music scene? Because I can't stop telling people about f- the Philly music scene, and I mean I read in magazines about it. Um, like, could you could someone else talk about it besides me for once? <laughs> Just to validate well, me here. It's it's interesting, right? Because there's always going to be that really like philly has this weird kind of microcosm of just these perfect house shows like unlike anywhere else in the country i've been to so you have all these kids playing Mm -hmm. i'm told go to them now because everyone just thinks i'm a cop but like overall like it's always been like a really good space and you you know every kid i think dreams of like working their way and playing first unitarian church (laughs) playing one of like like whether it's Joe Hardcore or R5 or whoever's putting the show together there. Right. I think everyone wants to play there. And there's just been these like little small perfect venues to see shows at, whether it was down South Philly at JR's um, Kung Fu Necktie in, uh, you know, Fishtown. Like we have this perfect small vibe energy in the city that I, I really it's very different than anywhere else I, I've been to mm-hmm. as far as the history of it. Um, you know, we, we we're fortunate enough to have a few labels that really go out and support people. Um, creep records. Eric's mm-hmm. been a huge hurt to me. Um, you know, uh, have a lot of really good record shops between creep yep. and sit and spin, uh, long in the tooth. um, up in the burbs, you got positively. There's a lot of really good spots to get records. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pretty much not answering your question at all. I'm just rambling off things that are in the city musically. But it, it it's uh, just laying the foundation of what what yeah. creates an art artistic community, you know, and what supports music, you know, because yeah. uh, that was one thing that we did when we were on tour, um, when we would pull into a city. And we, you know, say we're pulling into the city at three o'clock and the show is not and we don't have to load in till five. We all look Mm -hmm. at each other and we're like, all right, Google a record shop. You know, maybe maybe they'll take some of our vinyls. You know, maybe they'll talk to us about the scene or the place to play, you know, because they have a beat on the on on the city. Like they have a different they have a diff they have a different ear to the ground you know even in places like baltimore and stuff like that like the record shops know they keep the music history alive you oh, know yeah. um to some yeah. extent now seeing snakes is such it you guys might have been around forever but it's new to me and it's such a refreshing punk sound because you would think that this type of punk that it it w- it would be more common but it's not it's not really that common to have melody in punk anymore it's it's like what i'm getting is punk bands have strayed further into the indie surf realm or they mm-hmm. stray further into the heavy hardcore slash metal realm. And that middle ground isn't as like popular as as it once was. Um in, in terms of what I've uh 
experience and observe. So when I hear you guys, it reminds me a lot of when I first heard um, Up For Nothing out of New York and in Jersey. And I was just like, yeah, this is this is that punk shit like from the 90s, from the 2000s. <laughs> Like, why did bands stop playing this shit? <laughs> I, I think it's just one of those things, man, where it's just like everyone just trying to catch, like, cash in. Like you said, they ever all drifted towards like that indie surf, rock, indie like surf sound, or you know, try to be hardcore bands. I think part of that is like everyone, even in the punk scene, is just trying to get on more shows, make a few more bucks, try to keep the a reason for their band to be around, and with us it's just like we're old we're not going to try to get signed we're not going to try to like you know we're not trying to do anything big we just want to make music that we really enjoy and get that like kind of guttural sound of what comes out and sometimes it's melodic sometimes it's not yeah but like it, it's a hit we really dive into our influences between the four of us like our drummer brian is super into like hot water music bouncing souls things like that uh, our our good bass player will talk your ear off about lookout bands all fucking day. Right. Like I'll be like, you know, like if you if you want someone to talk to you about uh, Ben Weasel and uh, Dan Vapid, he'll do it. Mm -hmm. uh, our other guitarist is just a weird metal guy. And then I don't know, man. My favorite bands of all time were like Ignite and fucking um, I don't know, like No Use for a Name stuff like that. Right. Where it's just like, you know. Dudes that sing, music that's super fast. Everyone's meant to have a good time. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, that's what comes out. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to force us into like anything else. Yeah. Well, with that, let's, let's check out this first tune here. This tune is by Seeing Snakes. It's called Drinking Alone. Check it out. Right, that tune was called Drinking Alone. And the latest album that Seeing Snakes has is called Still Standing. And that song didn't, I guess, make the cut for that album. Yes. And, and and you put it in your pocket and put it out on a, a rainy day type of split, right? Right, right. We, um, you know, like uh, we were still like a lot of shit was still getting shut down for covid at the time to be honest we we ended up recording all the songs and still standing twice oh we ended God. up starting starting recording in february 2020 <laughs> right right and then we just you know fuck fucking lost it all um oh, and you know we just went back to it and we're like okay we could do it better and but yeah we ended up dumping it and you know, we kept a couple of songs, like I said, in our back pocket. Wanted to see where it would go and decided this handful of songs was going to make the album. And we thought those were our strongest ones. So talk to me then. Uh, what is there? Is there a story behind the still standing LP like all together? Because it, it's a hell of a it's a hell of a shot for the album cover that you got two kids like duking it out. Um, it's 
Yeah, is that yeah, is okay. that a theme of the record, or talk to me about this album as a whole? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's really just that. Um, we weren't sure, like, when we started recording it again, it what we were going to be going back into. Like, we weren't sure if like coming out of COVID and everything being locked down and people not having seen each other for so long, how shows were going to be. Okay. Um, we ended up booking a show at the pharmacy. Uh, and we're like, all right, let's just fucking go big. So we booked the Huntingtons. Um, I forget who else played that show. A band called Nylon from New Jersey. And then us and Matt Splatter. And it was wild. It was a great time. Like I saw people that I hadn't, you know, I hadn't seen two fucking years. Uh, so everyone was, you know, fucking just stoked to be around each other. And we're like, all right, we are still here. And that kind of carried over into like the spirit of the album, like where we're like, mm -hmm. these are stories about, you know, the idea that we are, we've made it through all this bullshit. We're fight pushing back and we're still where, where we should be. Like we're alive. We're happy. We're healthy. Um, now some of the songs don't necessarily fit that, that whole vibe, but for the most part, that was the whole push behind everything is just, Stand on your own two feet. And honestly, like that that picture, which is a picture from like 1920, I found of like <laughs> two kids outside a schoolyard, and one is just fucking socking the air one right in the face. For real, uh, too. I, like not <laughs> yeah. it's it's insane, it's intense. Um, I felt like that really captured the whole vibe of what we were going for, you know, where it's just push on, push out, keep going. Nice. Yeah, we got the the 1920s world star hip hop shot here. Um, so you guys really saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Then you guys knew that, like, you know, we're 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 gonna make it through this, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been so cool because coming out of it too it was like you, describing it as a tunnel is the best way to put it because we came out and I saw just this whole breath of people just being really, really creative and mm. people do different shit than when we started it and like you know um like i was we were playing century one night again one of the first shows <laughs> we did these are classic um, dude, spots by the way guys I love century. <laughs> the Jesus pharmacy and century are like staple uh, hole in the wall uh, philly spots <laughs> oh, I, I miss pharmacy uh it'll be back but, yeah. it'll oh, i think I don't know. Like, from my understanding, Gary Gary has moved on. Like I think he's doing oh. something else now. He's an awesome dude. Uh, I've known him forever. But Jay, who runs Century, is just like he, he's the friendliest guy in the world. Unless you break one of his, like he has like five rules. If you break them, fucking run. Like yeah. if you play a cover, you're dead. Like mm. it's just like the craziest thing. But I was doing door at this show, and God. it was just put together. I mean, whatever. Like, I was doing door at this show, and this band asked me to hop on. They're like, hey, we're just starting out. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, so I booked them, and it was just this perfectly raw, animalistic sound. And it was just like, it, what, it, was, it was so different than anything I've heard for a fucking minute. Uh, and I, that's what really made me sit there and go, I have to get these guys in a studio i have to hear more of it and i was friend mm. and i was just and like and it and what year was them, that i want to say 2022 like it was wow okay october, maybe october 20 2021 or 2022 like you know how those past those years just kind of scrunched together and now it's just like a blob of memory um, yeah, I was coming right out of COVID and it was like October of that year, like early October. I remember distinctly and it, they, it was just, they blew me away and like, they're, they're, they're still amazing. Like, I think they're a great, great band and such an awesome group of people. And I'm really stoked that they gave opportunity to, uh, throw caution to the wind and put out a record for a band that <laughs> I'd only heard like a handful of times. So yeah, we played a show. Really cool. My my band War Park played a show with them, and uh, this band from Atlanta, and uh, 
and it was around that time too. It might have been 2021. I'm not sure. It could have been 2022, but it was the fall. And uh, there was this thing where it was just kind of like, we didn't know what we just saw when we saw a friend. We were like, what the fuck did we just see, guys? <laughs> and uh, I, I feel like that's the best way to describe them. Like, you, you figure it out. <laughs> you fucking figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Like, take it, take from it what you want. Yeah. They're doing their own thing. Yeah. I feel like that's the, like, you're, it's different where, like, a lot of bands are like, come experience this with us. Come yeah. watch us and be part of it. And there's like, this is us. Fucking deal with it. And it's yeah. just like the most brilliant thing. It's just like this fearless, uncontained sound. Like, that's the best way to describe it. It's just, raw it's it's good i fucking mm. so was that kind of was that kind of the way that you you started the label did you have like that kind of inspiration where you kind of connected with other artists and you're like there's something i need to do about this that that was a huge catalyst for it because i had a couple releases but i only had like a handful of releases before i started talking to them um, like mostly just seeing snake stuff and then like a couple of things for friends along the way. Um, but after that, I was like, all right, I've just spent so much time locked in a home office or in my house for so long. Right, yeah. And now it's there and I just need to really go back to what I loved, which was going to the weirdest fucking spots and seeing the best bands. And I just ran with it. Hmm. Yeah, it's almost like you got a, like a jump. You got a jump start on. Oh, oh, we need to like you know, jump start the scene again. You know, the bit the bands are yeah. fucking hype. Um, yeah, and it's like, oh, go ahead. No, no, uh, I was gonna ask a totally different question. I, coming in our 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 next song here, I wanted to ask. <laughs> our next song is a band uh, called Chemical X. Who's also all the artists today are on Fameless Records, and they're also joining us on the bill at Philomoca on Sunday, October sixth. Matinee show, really rad. All now, ages. <laughs> all ages matinee yeah. show. Philomoca is yeah. is is one of those spots too. Those those awesome Philly spots uh, that all the kids want to play at. Why? What? What made you sign Chemical X? Is there a story behind that band? It's almost like you could cookie cutter and like take the friend, the friend story and apply it to Chemical X. Um, so I was at going to, there's a band from Philly called Battalion Zoska. Not sure if you're familiar with them. Nope. Kind of. Just, nope. So older, older than me, there's a guy named Pat Society. He was in a band in the nineties called Violent Society. Toured all over the world. They played with like casualties, the virus, um pretty much any like street or crust band right. i played with um and he's a nice guy and uh but he's super into like his polish heritage battalion zoska actually is named after an anti-fascist group that fought the nazis during world war ii so that's where his his like his like thought and process lies he's very into like the whole anti-fascism scene brilliant man um, but they were p- playing, a, again, I like going to the weirdest places for shows, a Polish community center. And it was in the basement. It was the weirdest vibe I've ever been to at a show because there were three people running the door. And you walk in, and instead of being like what you expect to see for any shows, where it's just brick walls, stickers all over the place, and things like that, it was like velvet curtains. and like. Wait, was posters. it the Yuki Club? It wasn't the Yuki Club. Oh, this okay. place is the Polish Associated Home, way up in the Northeast. It oh, was shit. this place was like a jazz club. It was so weird. Um, but I was there to see my friends Ben. It was a good fucking time. Um, they were great. But then I just saw Chemical X come out. All like five foot five of the singer Adam come <laughs> out and he's gonna kill me Sunday for saying that. Uh, but he he just. They just own the stage every time they play. And, and like, I was just like, this again, it's just this. It reminded me of like adolescence or Black Flag or yeah. seeing something like that. And uh, I was just, I was like, I got to learn more. I got to book them again. I got to do something. 
and they'll put on I book like we played an absolute stinker of a show where no one fucking showed up with them and they still put on a show like the place was fucking packed. Like they didn't <laughs> care. It's just this big ball of fucking energy. Yeah. Like they, they could, you know, they play as fast and hard as possible. And it's just, you know, may, you might get 25 minutes and like 14 songs out of them. It's so, ugh. That's and crazy. it's, it's been interesting. Yeah. And it's interesting to see what they're doing. They're going back on the road again. Yeah. <laughs> Part and like they're just they're they're just pushing as hard as they can. And honestly, I think, you know, two, three years from now, they're gonna be fucking huge. Yeah. They're just they own it every time they go out. And that's a little uh foreshadowing because they will be on the podcast when they return from tour. Oh. You heard it here first. <laughs> um and this tune is uh called Raid by Chemical X. Check it out. All right, that tune was called Raid. It's Chemical X. And you can find all this music on Fameless Records' website. It's fameless.myshopify.com. I'll put a link in the description. Tons of really cool LPs here. Um, so now, Tim, let's put you on the spot. You have all these bands. Which one's your favorite? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Fun. It's my favorite. No, um, yeah, that makes sense. Dude, no, no, no. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're all they're all awesome. Otherwise, I wouldn't, wouldn't you know spend time spend time or money on it, right? But dude, uh, I'll be honest. Let me think. My favorite release. I love <laughs> all the, but honestly, like back to back, I have to be honest. I listen to a lot of the Chemical X album right now. It's fair, but like fair everything I. Like that, I've had a hand in. I really like. There's a couple coming out that I'm really stoked for. So, yeah, yeah. that drummer is out of his fucking mind. 
All that drummer beast. is out of his fucking mind. Like to the point I had my friends sending me videos of him and was just like, did you play with this band? And I was just like, yeah, that's the drummer of Chemical X. <laughs> out of his fucking Wait. mind. Shout out to Scott. All- I think his name's Scott. Scott. Shout out to yeah, Scott. Scott Man Show. He's a, he's a, he's a beast. He's I remember like insane. I went to drop off their, yeah, I went to drop off their records, drove all the way up past the Meadowlands hand them the records and then next thing i know the third mom is trying to offer me wine it was really weird it's a jersey this thing super sweet. it totally is 100 <laughs> percent. um but seriously in all seriousness you've been doing this thing for a little bit now what is your uh what's the best thing about running a label and maybe what's the worst thing uh the thing. worst thing is being broke because you take every cent and you're like, if you really want to do it, you you, you invest a lot of money in it, which is fine. Like it's a non profit. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't profit. <laughs> but but no, like the best part about it, it really is really meeting people and just like really seeing what they're all about. Like how what comes out when 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 you give them an opportunity to just put whatever they want, like being given full reign to just commit themselves to giving them this really condensed idea of what they think is perfect out to the world and it's it's really probably the most awesome part about it what do you think like if you if you had like if you had like one thing like maybe one goal or one thing that you would want to like manifest towards with this record label what what could you envision for the future of fameless um I have to keep it to one. Um, honestly, I would sit there and say, like, right now, uh, I'm up to it's going to be 21 releases on vinyl with the the Soviet album coming out soon. I want to see how high that I could get that number. If I could get to a hundred, like that is it's like fucking insane to me. Um, so I think actually getting a hundred different releases out would be a fucking miracle to me mm. the other thing i would like to do is to get all these bands eventually find a, a venue that's willing to do like two or three days and just so i can have like a party like a, like just a complete rager of a show with just <laughs> utter chaos of everyone doing everything um fameless fest <laughs> yeah we we used to do it um <laughs> back in the day we got we we did like 13 bands in one day and it was wild because we went from uh, Connie's Rick Rack, if you remember that place. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was in like July and it was about 98 degrees out. And it was so hot that when they turned on the AC, the entire building went down. So we had to have all 13 bands pack up and move to the fire of all places. And, classic. Uh, you can, uh, we are name dropping can... the classic spots of Philadelphia today. Mm-hmm. Do we really want to call it classic at the fire? Anyway, it's classic. Um, you have to yeah. like. We have to give credit where it's due. The fire is classic. Yeah. We've all played it. We've all played there. It's I'm like... going there tomorrow. Actually, so <laughs> no! my friend's band's playing, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna it's be like, there. there's one like what like this is a riddle for you. Like, what does every Philly band have in common? <laughs> They've all, all played, played at the fire. the fire, dude. We've all played. We all, there, it's actually two things. We've all played the fire, and we've all got double booked at the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. It's 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 uh, it's definitely classic. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the one. That would be crazy, man. You guys, uh, another thing would be crazy is if if you had if you guys had a uh, like a stage. At Camp Punksylvania, or like, like, yeah, you know that that type of level. Punk Island, New York, those guys uh, operate with DIY stages. Like that would be a cool thing too. Yeah, I reached out to the Punk Island folks last year, and it was just, I guess, yo, know, they have so much going on when they're trying to set that up. I don't even really know how they do it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I'm gonna give them, drop them a line this year. Oh uh, shit! And foreshadowing reaching out maybe i kind of want to see if i could make the trip up for just shits and giggles to go to Pooza fest in canada oh 
I don't know if you know much about that one. It's like Montreal. Montreal. So it's like fucking French Canadian weirdness. Like it it's always weird. again it seems like a big like city citywide party, so I'm down. Poutine and partying. Montrealers party. That's for damn sure. <clears throat> they party really hard. Uh yeah. We went there once. Uh, well, well, we went there a few times. We just went there on tour uh with my band War Park. And there was one I, I forget the name of the spot, but um I don't remember if it was the first time or the second time we were there, but we played at the spot in Montreal where it must have been like the red light district or something because there were like sex. <laughs> <laughs> there were like uh, like massage parlors around and like okay. questionable like street like uh, walking crowd and stuff. And I remember when we were uh, when we set up the promoter of the show like was like, all right. I got, you know, I got this, that, I got cocaine, I got Molly, I got this. Like, he just started, he was just like, well, how do you guys want to do it? And we're just like, uh, we're good. Like, and he's just like, really? Yeah, I'll just have some bottled water and some money. Like, uh, <laughs> dude, like. And, on, and this is the kicker, dude. The guy was just like, wow, you're the first band to say no. <laughs> I was like, yo, dude. Montreal is cracked, oh, dude. dude. We're so. I where? Let me. Ask, I, I'm gonna turn tables on you. I'm gonna ask you a question. Uh oh. Where's your favorite state you've ever driven through and played? Um. We made this long. We did this long drive once. Uh. On one tour, we went from Minneapolis to 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 New Orleans in a few days, which uh, which was pretty extreme. Um, <laughs> so we drove yeah. through a, a few states there, but driving through Minnesota was amazing. Um, oh, I believe it. Driving through Minnesota was amazing. I I actually really liked Minneapolis. We were only there once, or were we there twice? I don't remember. Um. I think we were there twice, actually. We were there in Minneapolis twice, because I think we played Palmer's, and, and we played a house show. Um, so we were around there twice. So I really like Minneapolis, but um, um, I like New Orleans, but it was so fucking hot. Oh, my God. That is an ungodly feeling down I there. I got married in New Orleans, so. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Uh, but it's, like, hot all year and it's like the air is like thick and oh it's my fucking huge. like it you beats can... you up yeah and they act like it's completely normal but we're like it like you could tell people from the north because they're like dead by like 3 p.m yeah. it's just like so it's soupy it's Ugh. just <laughs> it's like you're walking in it through a cloud yeah it just kicked my ass yeah. we were there in july i don't know if that was made it oh, worse <laughs> Oh God, yeah, no, that's that's brutal, man. But coming from Minneapolis too, we were like, "Yo, this is fucking absurd, dude." It feels like oh, we're in it. Satan's armpit. Um, oh. But anyway, Tim. So guys, Tim and I, we're gonna be sharing the stage for the th third, second time, second time, second time, second, second time. time. We're sharing the stage, yeah. um, and it's going to be a big. Fameless Records family. Um, we might, well, we will, I'll manifest this. We will put out music on Fameless in the future. So this is going to be, it will happen. It will happen. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be a very cool party, homecoming, family, all ages event, matinee, you know, pre Phillies party down at mm -hmm. Philomoca on spring garden and i'm so stoked for this 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 is going to be just such a crash course in punk man like top to bottom every band on this bill is just going to bring such awesome different yeah. flavors of punk and it's such a sign up yeah it's like there's no there's no way to to go to beat around the bush this is just a fucking crash course in punk uh is what it is yeah. and it's it's gonna be sick um it's gonna be at philomoca matinee 1 p.m spring garden um and 
All the bands you heard tonight are going to be playing, and this last band is also going to be playing. It's called 13 Cavities, and this last tune is called Gok Mouthfeel. Tim, thank you so much for coming on the show and being such a part of the Philly music scene and everything that you do. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. All right, rip on, everybody. Thank you.